welcome back to an update on the 65 Chevy Impala uh, by Ravel, Foose edition that I'm doing as a tribute build to my wife. Um, just a quick update. I have everything ready to go. I have the, the engine in, front and rear suspension in, exhaust in. Uh, everything's painted, ready to go. Interior's done. I uh, worked two days on the interior. Uh, just waiting on the body to gas out. Now what I did, you know, about 10 days ago I did a video where I shot the uh, Model Master Burgundy Red Metallic enamel and lacquer thinner mixture. Got that shot, let that gas, and I've just been waiting for the kind of the humidity to break. Any of you who are east of the Mississippi River and south, north, it doesn't make any difference. Even, uh, you know, most of it. Matter of fact, you don't have to be east of the Mississippi, two-thirds of the country, I think, right now is, you know, kind of buried up in this humidity. It's terrible. It's rained here every day, and the humidity's been like at 90% just almost every day. So, but Sunday, I caught a little break. Uh, it dropped down. It rained like Sunday morning, I think it was. And humidity dropped a little bit after the rain went through and kind of cleared things out. And it got down to about 70%, so... I don't like to shoot much above 60, but I, I said, the hell with it. I'm, you know, I'm not going to wait. It's going to, long range forecast calls for it to be humid all the way through this week and weekend. Uh, I'm just not going to wait any longer, so I took my chances. Uh, used, I think I already mentioned that I got kind of in a hurry, and I was, had planned on the fenders, firewall, everything in the engine bay being body color. But I got in a hurry, and I went ahead and put my black, gloss black suspension in, and it had set for a day, and I thought, oh, man, you stupid. And I wasn't going to try to take it loose, so I just went ahead and I said, well, I'll just paint the, uh, the firewall and the fenders gloss black. So that's what the engine front uh, are all Chevy engine red. Uh, transmission uh, is gunmetal gray, folk art gunmetal gray. Uh, oil pan also Chevy engine red. Uh, the intake manifold is Tester's uh, metalizer. Titanium, buffed out a little bit. This this is the best looking carburetor I can find in my stash of carbs. The one that I just go uh, in my parts box and there's no detail, there's no barrel detail to it at all, but it's going to have the air clean on so it doesn't matter. But anyhow, got it drilled out, ready for some fuel lines, so we'll do that. The valve covers were uh, come from the kit as chrome. I started to just strip those and paint those. Uh, I said, no, I want, I want something that's a little bit shiny. So what I did was I used my Duplicolor Blackout Shadow for, that you use to make uh, black chrome wheels. You've seen me use that on the wheels before. So I shot one coat on that and it kind of gave it, a, kinda gave it a, a nice black chrome look to it. I thought that looked pretty good. I used uh, yellow slug wires this time. Uh, exhaust pipes, ma uh, mufflers, everything is... Tester's Model Master, excuse me, Tester's Metalizer, he said. Aluminum plate buffed out and it weathered up right at the little heat standing where the pipes come in and go out. Uh, shocks painted yellow, see red springs. I actually have some red craft, craft wire for the front springs. You can see those just a little bit. So, uh, I did lower the suspension in the front and the rear. I cut some, one round of spring out of the rear. It already set pretty low uh, when I mocked it up, so I didn't have to do much to it. I didn't want it slammed to the ground. I, I didn't really want it. I wanted kind of a forward rake to it, so I got that by taking one round of spring out, which brought the back end up some from using Pegasus aftermarket uh, chrome T wheels. And I took the, quite naturally the front, cut the spindles off, and brought them up, bring the uh, bring the front wheel up into the fender wheel just a little bit. It sits right at the top of the rim, so uh, that gave it a decent forward rake, at least in modern days. Yeah. So I'm yeah. on the uh, the seats and the body panel. Uh, like I said, it's called brown sugar. Uh, the reason why I wanted to use that is because, and I sit there and knocked off my speaker cover, which I will have to reattach. But anyway, we'll just leave it off for now. 
give you a chance to show you what that is. Uh, the, the speakers are the stock wheels from this kit. Uh, the stock Impala wheel turned upside down and then uh, gone over with a black sharpie and then this screen that just fell off is aerator screen for a faucet. I thought it made kind of a but it made a nice speaker grill, so I put that on. I also cut just a little bitty piece out for the both of the front front speakers, which you will never see, but OCD being what it is, I went ahead and put them on there anyway. Uh, let's see. And the reason why, what I was saying was, the reason I bought the multi-purpose satin for the interior is because, as you've seen me use the fingernail foil or fingernail strips before, and more times than not, when you put these in place, even after you've painted your interior, gone over it and sealed it with the, your satin or your flat or whatever it is you're going to seal it with, and let it sit for a day or two, when you go to put these fingernail strips in, and they are, they when they bite, they're like decals sometimes that slicks make. When they bite, they bite. Invariably, you're going to get one crooked. Well, in the past, when I've used just regular craft paint sealed up, and you go to move those decal, I mean, to move those strips off to resituate them, it's going to pull the paint up, and you wind up having, it's okay if it does it underneath, but more times than not, it pulls a piece that's outside the boundaries of uh, the thing of the light tan, whatever color you want to call that, and then the burgundy body paint uh, and the interior. I just wanted to use a satin color on that, and that's what I, I did, and it sealed it with the satin polyurethane. Same with the steering wheel, only the true burgundy has been glossed with gloss polyurethane. Horn ring, is, well, I left it chrome, it's been treated with the uh, Tamiya smoke, as has the uh, rear seat insert, and has a decal, kit decal for the Impala. Uh, badge. You look right close. Let me see if you can see it without me getting too close. Well, I'll just show it to you like this with my camera when it focuses. It zooms in and focuses. It doesn't want to go back sometimes. Uh, I put, I had the photo, I bought the photo etch kit for this car. Uh, you see in the middle, I did this much as her car would be and is in real life. The keys go in the, when the car is parked and she comes in, the keys are left on the console, as is the CDs that she's been listening to. So I kind of decided to just put those there and uh, like real life, much as it is in real life. So she didn't see a lot of humor to that though when I explained why I did that. Um, and like I said, the photo etch kit that comes with this has the gauge trim rings on the top. I have those uh, radio face de uh, radio face photo etch I already had uh, in uh, in supply here all, already and I put that in the heater and air controls for the uh, came with the photo etch kit for the car and power badging uh, the air vents I don't know if you can see those the air vent trim rings did not come with the photo etch kit those are one uh, four millimeter jump rings that uh, are in the jewelry section at Hobby Lobby. So I used those uh, for that. Uh, the speedometer, uh, the gauge decals up here are the ones that came with the kit. Uh, the control knobs, you can't see them and I'm not going to try to zoom in. Uh, there's four uh, control knobs that are part of the photo etch kit and I'll if not this video at the end, I'll put a little slide, a couple slides in to show you what all, uh, how it looks up close. Uh, if you overlook the dust that I did not get off before I took the pictures. Let's see what else. That's pretty much it. Oh yeah, uh, put uh, has carpet on the deck and floor that is uh, felt, just felt from uh, Hobby Lobby. Fifty cents a sheet. Uh, the chrome trim inside is the bare metal foil. And actually, I'd already done, I'd already gotten all the trim in. There's power window switches on the driver's side and in the individual ones for all the other passengers. 
It has been bare metal foiled, but the photo etch kit came with those as well. And I, so I got everybody to gas out a little bit, and I think we can call this one complete. So I guess for now, until I talk to you again. Oh yeah, I just uh, one one other thing. I want to thank all my subscribers. I just passed up uh, past the 1,200 subscriber mark. Can't tell you how much I appreciate all of you who have who have subscribed and are watching my videos, and and I appreciate you all so very very much. Uh, you are what makes me do this. So uh, I appreciate all of you, and uh, tell your friends, and let's uh, continue on. I guess. All right. Until I talk to you again, take care of one another, keep building, may God bless you and your family. Talk to you soon.